last time we talked a little bit about what it means uh, to be complete and to be not complete. But the overriding feeling of the female that she needs to be fulfilled. And it's the husband's job to fulfill her. And fulfillment is, of course, also to have children. It's in many things, but the, the, the main description of this, the, the uh, metaphor, if you want, is called the secret of the whole and a half. That to make something complete, you have to have both wholeness and halfness at the same time. It's the wholeness in the male that connects with the feeling of halfness in the female. Well, what's the idea here? The idea comes from a long time ago, about a thousand years ago, when the early Mekubalim, they were faced with this question of how do you describe Hashem? So the Rambam, the philosophers, they said you can't describe Him at all, and certainly you can't describe to Him any kind of lack. He's not lacking in anything. And then came a few very smart people, and they said, but if you ignore lack and you say that God has nothing missing, He has no lack, He has no need for anything, then somehow we have something that He doesn't have. And that, that can't be. It can't be that man has something that Hashem doesn't have. Hashem is much more than man, but he's at least man. He's not a person, he's not an individual, he doesn't have a body, but he can't be less than a body. Meaning, even the physical bodies that experience lack, for instance, they experience the opposite of life, death, and they need things in order to survive, so that must be a quality that somehow exists in God also. So they came up with this new equation that said that if you discount from Hashem lack, you've discounted His completeness. You've taken away from His being perfect. To be perfect is to also be able to experience lack in, in yourself or in others and not to be completely uh, destroyed by it. You have to be able to contain it. If you can't contain it, you're not perfect. You're missing something. I have something that you don't have. How can that be? So these two sides of the Abishtar, of being perfect, which includes being whole and having lack, they become the archetypes of male and female in the world. That the masculine represents and is supposed to strive to represent the whole side of Hashem. And the feminine represents and is supposed to strive to be, and it is, the incomplete side of Hashem, the part that experiences lack. Now, now today men are emasculated, so they're almost feminine. So it's very hard to find a man who can stand, who, 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 can, even, who can even surmount his Yetzirah. What does it mean to surmount your Yetzirah? The first thing is that a person has composure, that he's in a situation that he brought himself into by choice, so he can control himself there. If he can't control himself, so he's a little child. Okay. Children, when we're children, we we're more feminine in that sense, that we experience more of our lack. But if you can't control yourself, so you remain feminine throughout your life. But to become masculine means to give unto others from your wholeness. And sometimes you don't feel whole. Sometimes you feel, I'm very lacking. And yet, that's exactly the role that the male has to play, even if he doesn't feel that. Because he's supposed to connect to Hashem's aspect of being whole. Again, if, when I say it's, it's it's called an, a, a, a normal situation. Normal doesn't mean that you're normal. Normal in, in, in Mahshava means that there is something that I need to do. I'm not guaranteed that this will work even. 
But if I ask myself what feels right, what will make me come to my full uh, abilities, realize my full potential, so my potential as a male is to experience Hashem's side of being whole. Whereas the woman's potential is dafka to connect with the side of Hashem that feels the lack. So you could say that we all are, we all begin in this situation. And it requires a lot of work to attain the status or to even connect with it at some level of not needing anything. Self-reliance. If a person needs to eat, so he's, he's lacking, he's, 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 a, he's a nothing. Would you say the women of today are more off the top, off track at the fact that they have jobs and uh, feeling homeless by themselves? Is there an aspect of that? No, it just means that other things are helping them fulfill themselves. But on the contrary, for a woman to go out and to seek fulfillment is the most natural thing in the world. But she wants to receive it, first of all, from her husband. About saying, how do they, how they going to feel lack in That's why you go out. Then... That's the motivation for going out. The motivation is that I need to fulfill myself. But the motivation in the meal is that I want to give. It's not, I don't go out because I feel the lack in myself. Okay. You're saying on the male aspect, he's not connecting to the aspect of Hashem where he's whole and also has lacking. It should be, it's two separate things. It's not about a man. It's not like just because I was born male, so I'm automatically whole. So people think like that. That's some guy. But my duty, all the mitzvahs that I have, they're in order to gain this feeling, that's what they try to do. My whole experience of serving Hashem is one of getting closer and closer to Hashem. What do I mean getting closer? So if you ask a, a man, what does it mean to be close to Hashem? So he'll say that my davening was very good today. If it's a Pesach, he'll say the Seder went very well. If it's Sukkot, I'll say, I didn't mess up the... Uh, Except the Sukkah. <laughs> I, I didn't mess up the Kavanos of, uh, of shaking the Lulav. Everything worked the way it should. There's a sense of accomplishment in making it complete. It's very difficult because there's many, many, many details. But if you're able to make all these details work, you get a sense of, of being complete. And that sense carries over to the house, to your home. Now what happens if, if what you're doing is incomplete? What happens if you came to davening late, you came to learn, you didn't understand the word, it didn't interest you, and you didn't listen to anything, you didn't care. So you come back home with a feeling of, uh, I'm very incomplete. So what do you do? How do you, how do you, how do you work with that? So you have to say, it's true, that this is my work, this is what I need to, this is what I'm working on, I'm not guaranteed to get there. But to my wife, I have to present the fact that I'm working as hard as I can, I have to show it, I have to be frank, I have to be honest. If it's not honest, then of course it's, you can see straight through it. But if I'm working to attain that, that state, so it has a very good uh, uh, impression on the home. And there's a feeling the home is stable. There's a feeling that things will be okay. But if the feeling all the time is the husband comes home and the only thing he does is complain, he's complaining about everything. He's complaining about his wife. He's complaining about where he learns. He complains about where he works. He complains about his parents. He complains about this, he complains about that. That doesn't create a, a, the right atmosphere at home. Why am I complaining? Because I can't stand the fact that I'm not yet complete. I can't stand it. Said them. They have to have anava. You have to have humility that I'm on the way. Some days I get closer. Sometimes I don't get closer. But in the end, it's not promised. But that's where I need to go. 
And as long as that's the overriding feeling, it has an impression on the home. That he is an oivet, he's working. He's in the middle. And like Tatanya says, I'm in the middle of the process. But I'm in a, I'm in a process, I'm not I'm sitting in a street corner and not doing anything. I'm doing something. And if Hashem wants, I'll, I'll reach. But I, for my part, am, am doing all that I can. Okay. So no, just, may, the, may I ask you if you're the, the men have mis obligation mitzvahs and the women are plenty of mitzvahs. Don't have, don't have mitzvahs. Oh, how, is it, how is that in the aspect of the woman trying to fulfill herself? Because uh, it's, the, it's the husband that fulfills her, not herself. She can't, she, she's not in the process of trying to fulfill herself. Something else is fulfilling her. So that's that maybe she should have been, but that should have been, uh, been genuine. Yeah, because otherwise it would be something that she was doing. Instead, it's coming through her husband. <coughs> it's a question of whether, whether it's a feeling of accomplishment that I accomplished, or whether as a, as a pair we accomplished something. It's like, is she a woman trying to relate to God? She, 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 does woman have in her nature uh, an aspect to, uh, to bond with uh, Shiva, uh, like you said, with the Friday Through her husband, yes. Yeah. Only through her husband. She I mean, sees it as the home. The home is bonding with the Shiva. It's not I personally. It's, yeah, it's a very important that when, when a woman feels that she's connected to Hashem, it's not at the personal level. It's not that there are no exceptions. There are always ex exceptions to the rule. There are always women who are more masculine in this sense. But in general, most women will feel that Hashem is with, her, is with them when the home feels like it's a home that's connected to Hashem. It's not her personally. It's not how many hours she spent learning. It's not how many hours she spent davening. That's why, in a certain sense, it's hard for men to she ask them, what would I prefer to do, to learn or to do dishes? So in an ideal situation, the, the wife also feels that it's better time spent for the man to learn. As maybe she wants him to learn in the kitchen, to be with her, so that she feels that what she's doing has an, has a, is doing something. But the feeling is more that together we're approaching wholeness, not separately. By the man, there is no such thing. But the, because of that, men tend not to share. They don't realize how much their wife depends on hearing from them what... It doesn't matter if she doesn't understand even what they learned. It's not important. It's the fact that I'm part of this. The, the feeling of sharing for most men is the hardest thing in the world. Because a wife wants to share something, she's not telling you what I went through today is the most important thing in the world. That's not what she's saying. It's not like learning. The learning is, in and of itself, the Torah is important. The value is in the content. But when she's sharing, she's saying we're together in this. So even if you do the part that has more content, let's call it, how do I become part of that? By sharing myself with you. And if you don't know how to listen to me, so we're not together. So it doesn't matter what, what she's talking about. She could be talking about something very serious. She could be talking about something not serious. But if you don't spend the time to listen, then you're not a unit, as far as she's concerned. The men don't see this. Because what do they see? I'm whole already. Everything that I do is a vote of Hashem. I said, if everything that you do is a vote of Hashem, you're really complete. Hashem listens to women. We know that the first woman, she, the first individual he really listened to, and from whom we learn how to daven, is a woman, Tana. So he, he listens. So if you're complete, if you're close to him, you should be able to listen as much as is needed. But understand that that's a vote of Hashem. Because as far as your wife is concerned, that's how we become together. That's how we, that's how we join forces so that I'm not just taking care of the home for the sake of myself. I want to feel that this is for, for the sake of our home. You see that? 
So this is a small error. So in, in a sense, what he was testing before, so you can say that now women are more, have their masculine side more, at least the society, culture has developed more the masculine side, so that women feel the need to be self-fulfilled by themselves, not by, by, by this call. The men are, the men. Men are so not they doing it. The, the, huh? the men are not doing what they're supposed to do. They have to find it somewhere else. They're going to get jobs. So, okay. Sometimes they have to get a job because they need the money. But if you're getting a job to build a career because you want to feel self-fulfillment, it's because in the end, the men are not men. They don't know how so to it's act like men. women are so, uh, okay. it is uh, power. Okay. Both it's, both, it's, both, it's everybody's fault. But in the end, the tikkun is mostly dependent on what the man would do. Right. So you look for it in some other place where I can feel a part of something. So again, so what can the question is according to this? Uh, again, it doesn't mean that women don't have a masculine side. Right? When we say male and female, it should be more exact. You say the masculine side of Hashem, right. the feminine side of Hashem. Every individual has a certain makeup that's part of this and part of right, that. Right, but you're saying that women should have their more feminine side, more, of course, it should be predominant. N normally, most women are more feminine. <laughs> right, but now, nowadays that we see this tofa that happens, mm -hmm. where the women have the need to go out and to work and to feel fulfilled by themselves, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. society also, but also women, so, so it's, it's something already inside the, the, the cup of the woman also. So how can we as men, you say, you say it's our focus, we're not doing our part. So what exactly is it that we have to do in order to make the woman feel, to develop and to have this feminine side more, more uh, be the one that, that comes out? Okay. So, so first of all, we need to know what we're aiming for. What, what the male needs to aim for, the masculine side of reality needs to aim for, is for there to be a feeling that everything is complete. It's perfect. It's whole. That's the feeling that I'm supposed to, as a, the masculine side is supposed to bring into the world. So how do we achieve that? So now we have this puzzle. Let's see it now. It's the second paragraph in the note on the first page. Shalosh madrigot shel kirva yeshnan benish lisha. So the three levels of being together, of nearness between a man and a woman. When Adam first meets Chava, what does he say? This time, it's bone from my bone and flesh from my flesh. This will be called a woman. Because she was, because this was taken from man. He doesn't call her woman three times. He calls her this, zot. So we know there's a bit, there's the, the svarim, all the svarim of Rav Zusha, they're all called zot something. The most famous one is zot zikaron. Rav Zusha wrote three books. They're all related to the word zot. Why? Because zot in the in the Tanakh means malchus. That's what, it, that's what it refers to. Zot Torah shor sa Moshe lifnei b'nei Yisrael. So you, people point at the Sefer Torah, the Malchus of the Torah, the way that it appears in the world, the flesh of it. So in the same way, here he's referring to the feminine aspect in his, in his wife. He calls her a woman. He says, Lazot ikarei isha, I'm going to call this isha. But... What's going to be called a woman? The aspect of femininity in me, meaning in what came out of me now. Now the feminine came out of me, the malchus came out of me, and now it's become its own separate being. And, and I refer to, but, but why three times Zot? So he says each one of these refers to a different level of connection to my own malchus, to my own femininity, meaning my femininity is now my wife. I have to find my being feminine in my wife, not in myself anymore. Because before it was separated, it was in, in him. Now it's separate. So how do they come together? So there's a nice gimancha here. The three times zot equals four times woman. Who had four wives? Yeah, Yaakov. So Yaakov had the perfect... It's a very interesting thing that to have three levels of connection 
You can't do it with three different women. You need four. Yeah. Hot. One and a third. What? Each has a one and a third. Spare. Yeah, spare. So apparently, <laughs> so it's not, it's not, so it's not exactly a spare, but apparently it is. Clearly. Okay, it is some kind of connection with each one of them separately, but but it cycles through them. And so the what? Said it. That's also. But Yaakov just by himself had all four. Okay, it's true that when you say Gimel and Dalin, so we talk about the Imbalus in general. Okay? Yeah, I read the continuation. <laughs> but it's not also. So the, the three Avos had four, four Imamos. Well, we have three Avos, three Avos and four Imamos. But Yaakov had it all by himself, everything together. If we add this, Imakolo, three times Zot, with the colon equals 35 squared, which is also the triangle of 49. So we'll leave the math uh, aside right now. We'll just say that this is equal to 1,225. And the midpoint of 1,225 is 613. What does it mean, the midpoint? If I have five coins and ask what's the midpoint of five coins, it's the third one. So if I have 1,225 coins, the middle one will be the 613th from each direction. So what it's saying is that if you're able to find all the levels of connection with your wife, all three levels, then we only have one wife. So if you can find all three levels, and that's what happens today, that's why it's so complex today, because you have to know where you are, where you're holding. Because the, the, the connection shifts all the time. So by Yaakov it was easier, because Rivka and, and uh, sorry, Rachel and Leah, it was pretty clear what it was. And then Bila and Zilpa, they sort of cycle through the, the whole process. But, but for us, it's like every day I have to think, who am I finding here? Let's say it. when a person gets married, he marries three different women, right? When okay. she's regular, when she's okay. Nida, who is bringing she's out in himself three different people, three of us. And there's three of me inside that all of them have to connect to my wife. Certainly, it's easier to stay in one place at the same time and not to move around too much. So normally, as time goes goes by, after five, ten years of marriage, people get stuck in one of these relationships. They get stuck. <laughs> it's very hard to move. I had somebody come to me last night, and he's been married 22 years. And from, from the second year of marriage, he's been stuck in the worst marriage in the world. Why, why can't he move? Because things tend to solidify. People get used to each other acting in a certain way, and they can't move. But even if you just tell the person, even if you just know the look, I change over time. It's, you can't always be happy. You can't always be perfect. You can't always be a garden of roses. But there's always an ability to change. There's always an ability to shift. Just the fact that I know that I can shift and change gears, sometimes that's enough to get me out of a rut. Just the fact that, the, that I know beforehand that the Torah talks about the fact that I'm going to have three different types of relationship with my wife and in different things sometimes it's even in the same day in different things I feel each one of these so what are these so let's see so there there what there what uh, uh, the Torah says what does that I will make him him a helper usually is in Hebrew means opposite. Yes. Opposite meaning in front of. But it also means naked. How's the Rashi saying the Pshat? He says, Mamash, this way. That So Ezer Kenegdo, these two we all know about. That if you merit, how do you merit? How does a person merit to have a good relationship with his wife? It's dependent on zakha. We translate zakha as merit, but what does zakha really mean? Zach. Zach. It means that you have to cleanse yourself, you have to purify yourself. It's work on yourself. The bottom line is that what level of relationship you're holding by entirely depends on you. Like we said last time, don't feel that you're a victim. 
that even if your wife by nature has a very hard time connecting, still the level of the connection that you all have is more dependent on, on you than it is on her. Because that's what it means for one side to be the whole and the other side to be the half. That the side that's whole, even if it's not, I'm not talking about perfect, but if you're, if you're radiating, if you're giving off the vibe of things being good, they're whole, then that's what's picked up. And it gets better. The easiest thing in the world is to pick a woman up. No. To lift, to lift a woman, to lift any person is very easy. But your wife, it's the easiest. One good word, what, 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 is, what does a person expect? When, when, do you, when, it, when do you have to work hard to lift somebody up? When, when is it a hard task? When you don't have strength. When you don't have any strength. You what? When you, don't have any when you yourself are upset. And the situations that really define a marriage or now when everything's going okay for me and my wife's having a hard time and then I say a few good words. That, that goes without saying. The difficulty is when we're both having a hard time. Let's say we had an argument. So who has to make up? Always. Who's the first one who has to say, I'm sorry? Because you're whole. What does it mean to be whole? We have an ongoing argument with Hashem of how will the redemption come? Will the redemption come because we do tshuva? Or, because, or whether he, he has to do tshuva? Who needs to do tshuva? Tshuva, <laughs> Elayim. He says, return to me, I'll return to you. We say that you return our... That's what he says. Yeah, right. And we say, if you return to us, we'll return to you. So who, who has the cards? We're the feminine. Relative to him, we're the feminine. So says Hashem, really, I'm not expecting you to really return to me. What I'm expecting is that, that you show me that you're interested. Just show me something. I don't expect you to come back. Just show me something. What does show me something mean? It could be the smallest thing in the world. Hashem, I haven't given up. And by the way, that's, that's usually how the woman feels. I haven't given up. I want to be reconciled. I want to, I want to make up. But I can't bring myself to make the first thing. I can't say the first thing because I'm lacking. So who has to have the responsibility of doing something after the argument? So if I don't know, if I don't know where to take the strength from, because I feel that uh, in some way this is going to uh, reflect badly on me, my wife is going to think I'm a, I'm, I'm a, I'm a pushover. A bigger. A bigger. <laughs> and then I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm easy to, to, to fool or whatever. It's simply not true. I have to remember what role I'm playing. If I can remember what role I'm what role I'm playing, that tomorrow morning where am I going to go? I'm going to go to shul. I'm going to dive in. Tomorrow morning I'm going to go learn. I'm connected all the time to the infinite. I do a good job at it. Not such a good job at it, but in the end I'm connected to the infinite. I have mitzvahs that connect me to the infinite. That's what we learn in Tanya. What is a mitzvah about? It's being one with Hashem, being one with the unlimited nature of Hashem. Where do the mitzvahs come from? They come from the Sobev. Moreover, in this very act that I'm now with my wife in this home, I'm performing a mitzvah. Which mitzvah am I performing? The first mitzvah in the Torah. Is she performing a mitzvah? Not, not sure. 
Mitzvahs give a person strength. That's what they're meant to do. So I am always connected to a higher place. So that's why Hashem gave me the responsibility to make the first step. So even if we fought, even if it's difficult, even if I don't have the strength, I don't have the koyach, I don't have the energy, I don't have any of this, the moment that I remember that my role in this is ordained, it's given by Hashem, it changes the whole, uh, the whole scenario. I can't take strength from myself sometimes. I have to take it from somewhere else. So where do I take it from? I take it from Hashem. And I can also say that. Hashem, give me strength. I don't have strength. I don't have, I don't have the strength. I don't have the composure to now go back into the room where we fought and, and, and to say a kind word and to make up. So Hashem, give me strength. Why should you give me strength? Because you commanded me to, to do this mitzvah. And by commanding me to do this mitzvah, you automatically made us one, you and I, Hashem, and automatically you're supposed to give me the strength to be able to do this. That's what it means. So that's called zakir. What's stopping me? Only one thing is stopping me from doing this. My pride. My pride, myself. My feeling that I'm already perfect. I don't have to work to be perfect. I don't have to connect to Hashem to be perfect. It's not through my mitzvot that I become whole. Rather, I already am. I don't need to do anything. And a person who feels that he doesn't need to do anything, so that, that's a person who has pride. Gaiva. And his gaiva stops him from being able to say, I'm sorry. Of course you're sorry. Who's not sorry after they fight? You wanted to fight. So even if you say it just on that, you're, you're still saying, I'm sorry. But again, it's coming from the fact that that's called zikuch. That's, that's what it means to, 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 uh, to purify myself. The main thing I need to purify myself from is my feelings of self, of self-importance, self-aggrandizement. All these things I have to learn how to put aside. And, that, and in fact, why did we have the argument in the first place? Because that's exactly my wife's role. It's to challenge those feelings. The argument was meant from Shemaim to place me in a position where the only way I can get out of it now is by giving up on my pride. Why did I get into the argument in the first place? It was also because of my pride. It was also because of my self-aggrandizing. It was also because of my self-importance and how I see myself. This is the, so it got me into the trouble in the first place. This is the klipa that comes from the fact that's that, a that person, a man feels whole, so the, the other side of that is that he ends up feeling ego. Right. I have to understand that feeling whole means connecting to Hashem. And if in some way I feel that I'm perfect without that, then at that moment my wife begins to argue. So what, what, what happens in situations maybe when what, what you're saying Maybe you could always find that in the Vini Signani. Maybe you could always find that deep down it's always because about something that discussions just result from uh, different days and, and, and certain issues that not necessarily one has to do with my God. It has to do with because I have a, a, a world view in one certain aspect that doesn't necessarily fit with my, my, my work is. There are things that we might just not agree. Uh -huh. So you have to argue. <laughs> so, so when, when what if, for example, Usually, I've been sorry when one gets more, more engaged or more fired with the. With, with, uh, so, very good to believe in what you believe in. So, so you can discuss it. Some topics you might not be able to solve ever. There's certain things that you just, you just can't solve. So what? It doesn't need to lead, lead to a risk. So you're saying it's not the discussion. It's 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 your reaction to it. It's right? it's it's, it's a revival. The contrary. The whole the whole point of not being alone is that I have something somebody to discuss things with. Yeah, if all my wife ever but, does well, is right, agree with it's me. It's politics, you know. It's like you're not discussing about what what's happening. You're some, what are you discussing? Are so, so let's give an example. Which school Kino, is you Kino, 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 Kino. Yeah, that's that's. Uh, let's say more talking about what's happening in Let's start with let's start with more prosaic things. Who's had an argument in the last week? What was it about? Who didn't? <laughs> so who did? So anyway, we'll start with you, the guy who, who's always busy with his phone. <laughs> wow. yeah, his wife's separate. So why he says he's too busy with his phone? <laughs> so what was your argument this week about? This week? Yeah. <laughs> My wife.
married? Not married. Not that they're soon to be married. They're really married. They're really married. They're really married. Maybe they can volunteer if you want. Yeah, we can. In a second, in a second. Wait, he's gonna wash the dishes. He's gonna wash the dishes. So what did you say? Why did you argue about it? <laughs> that was the argument. Who's gonna wash? <laughs> <laughs> The voice is what about you? To really, you know, it's, it's what about you? Not so many. Like, just it must be something, though. But we together, <laughs> there's no argument. Like, who is looking better than the other, you know? When I want to help, I don't help. He said, better not to help. help. And you argue about it? It's an argument, but I just help and, like, get out of the same place, you know? Better when you know that it's not gonna. Be good, like the relationship. Good. Just separate it for that moment. So, so, so that's a way to solve it for now. Yeah. Stay uh, in different rooms. Right. <laughs> when you know that it's gonna become stressful. So, what is the stress about? That you think you know how to cook, and she thinks you don't know. Everyone thinks that I cook better than the other, you know. Okay. So, why do you think that? It's, it's ego. Different. It's ego. He watches Master yeah, Chef. Like, what? He watches Master Chef. <laughs> so, so what? What's? So what's behind it? What's behind this feeling that I need to show that I know how to cook? Mm -hmm. No, why is he the imagine? Because he wants to be better than somebody else. Is it really that you want different food, or you want to show that you know? Wh which is it? So on this, you have to ask yourself, I'll give it from two different perspectives. Reb Nachman has a story that's called the Chacham and the Tam, the wise man and the simpleton, or the earnest man. And he describes how the earnest man lived. He says he didn't have very much in his home, but... When he sat down to dinner, he would tell his wife, my wife, bring me the soup. So she'd bring him some water without anything. Not water. So he'd eat a delicious soup. Then he said, bring me the meat. So she'd bring him some potatoes. Bring me the chicken. She'd bring him some more potatoes. And then everything she brought him, he said, these are the best he didn't say the best potatoes, so this is the best meat, the best chicken. When he went out and it was cold, he said, give me my, my fur coat. So she brought him, he had a simple coat that the farmers have. So he said, this, this, there's no, no such coat in the, in the world. This is the warmest coat in the world. She's a pretty good wife, she's listening to her. And she, she's just the best. She brings him all these wonderful things. How is that possible? So he said, calls it the tam, like he's an idiot, right? What did, what did the, the Alter Rebbe say about his time in, in, Mez, in Mezrich? He said one of the things that happened in Mezrich was that he lost his sense of taste. He didn't have a sense of tasting. So what do you say? Oh, wait. Mezrich, Mezrich they, uh, they gave people pilpen, like uh, hot peppers that were so hot that they burnt their uh, taste buds. It mean he lost it. He lost it because he was interested in something else. So when he saw food, there's a lot of my murram on this, they all start with Dudu Matril, which is about the taste, which can be either taste, physical taste, or it can be like Tam in Hebrew also means reason. So he says, when I look at food, food is to awaken in me, in me the reason. He brings it in Tanya, he says that Rava, Rabbi Zera, I think. I don't remember who it was now. Maybe Rava, maybe Rabbi Zera. He couldn't answer a kasha that was given him in the base medrash until he ate the fat of, a, of, a, of, a, of an ox. Yeah, it's some, some kind of really, really good piece of uh, sado that he had to eat. And then he came back the next day and he had a, a psha for the kasha. What's going on? What, what, what the, 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 the fat made him smarter. He says, no, the, the only reason I eat is because if I know how to use the food the right way, 
it awakens in me a higher reason. Okay, so you and I are not Rabbi Zera or whoever was Rava, but we have something else that we do every day. What's the ikur? Why is why is my wife? Why does she want to? Why does she want to cook? Why does she want to bring me food in the first place? What's the reason behind it? I have to look at the reason in everything. What is she doing by doing this? Like we said, this is how she's becoming a partner. This is how we're we're, we're together. She's providing me with the sustenance. She's connecting to me this way. So if I take that away, it doesn't matter how good the food will come out if I do it better. Because it's not about the taste, the physical taste of the food. What is it about? I have to use my mind. I have to reason all the time. I have to understand that behind every act there is a reason. And the reason that she's not saying, because you can't even say it, is that this is how I connect to you. That so is you, honest or painful? Like, what? About the food, if it's you, not so yeah. good. It's bad like to say it was amazing even though it wasn't. Just because be because what's amazing? What are you praising? No, there's like both ways. So, which one? Be so it depends on what you're praising. What, 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 what amazing? Oh, you really like you it, ate it, and it was so-so. It wasn't so great. Food wasn't so good. No, the food wasn't so good. So what are, you, what are you praising? What do we praise? We always praise the, the reason behind it, what you wanted to achieve. It's a big deal also with children. The child comes to you with a drawing, and he says to you, look, Tati, Say something. So what do you say? It's this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. What are you, an art critic? <laughs> you understand something about art? What are you talking about? You would know if this child can grow to be Van Gogh. You, you don't know. You have no idea. You don't know anything. What are you talking about? You're giving empty praise. That's empty. Because you don't understand. What should you praise? The act. You spend time doing this. We say it in, the, in Chabad, there's a saying in Hebrew, Anachnu kablanim shel maasim lo shel We are contractors of actions, not of results. Don't fall into the Western mindset which says everything is measured by the result. It's simply not true. Because if Hashem wanted to, the whole world would be I perfect at this moment. Yeah. The world will be perfect right now. But Hashem wants me to be a partner. So he looks at me and he says, can you build the entire world? No, he says, can you do something? Can you show me that you're interested in this? It's better to say thank you though. Sorry? It's better like not to be honest thank you. You are honest. I'm honest about the effort. I'm honest about the intention. I'm honest about the Rahman Ali Right? Even like aware, imagine like, you are the first of all play. You don't eat, you say like thank you, it's amazing. But you don't eat it, so like the body was amazing. Right? If you can't eat it, so again you're you're looking at the chitonis. Even if it's not good. The, says Al Rabbi, I lost my taste, not because I don't have taste, but because I look at something else. So if my reason for being for being here at the table is to eat, I can go to a restaurant. My reason for eating at this table that we bought together or that we got together and that's in our house is because I want to build a relationship with you. So even if it's not so good, that doesn't matter. Even if it's horrendous, it doesn't matter. It'll improve over time, probably. But it doesn't matter. The question is, what am I looking at? If I'm chitzoni, if, if, I'm, if somebody was only looking at the external characteristics, you're right, I'm going to suffer a lot. It doesn't mean that the moment that I only look at the pneumas, everything becomes delicious. Nobody becomes loved. Even if I can love it, I can say I loved it, even though I didn't find it very tasteful. Why? Because I love you. Because I love the connection that this creates. That's where, that's where it's at. That's to look at the inner concept in everything. You have to look at the, at the Iker. What's the Iker? The Iker was what were you trying to achieve? What, what it, even if the woman is not doing it 
consciously to connect. She's doing subconsciously to connect because there's a commitment. She feels the commitment that I'm committed to our life together. And part of our life together is that we eat. So if I take that away, uh, by the way, if, if the ichor is there, nobody ever asks you what did it, ta- what did it taste like. I Meaning if, you, <laughs> if your child comes to you and you, and you praise the real thing, which is what they did, the act. They don't, they, I've never at least encountered that they pressed me, but how is it? <laughs> because that's not what the person's looking for. The person's looking for the connection, he's looking for the appreciation. The appreciation, they also understand that they're not Van Gogh. Nobody's an idiot. But you know what we do? That we start teaching children that praise is about the result, and they end up becoming praise junkies or result junkies. They have to see results. And you have a, also a Zusha story. Zusha once for a few days was in front of the same blood of Gemara. The reason was probably they didn't understand. He found it out. He had a lot of kashas on this blood. So he, he was there for like two, three days. Finally, one of the younger guys in the, in the Magid Shtibel, he comes to him and he says, Zusha, you know, if you turn the page, there's a lot of interesting things on the other side. So what did Zusha say? I'm very happy where I am. I don't need to advance. I don't need, I don't need to see the results that I understood something more. I need to be where I am. I need to put the effort where I am. If this is where I am, I'm very happy here. Okay? That, that, that's, the, that's the tam. That's what it means to be avodat mima. What does it say about, what does avodat mima mean? In, in the Chumash, Rashi says, avodah she'ein achorei avodah. There's, I did what needs to be done, there's nothing more to be done. Every, every moment is Shabbos in that sense. Kol melech t'chasoya, you've done everything. There's nothing more to be done. What do I mean? There's nothing more to be done. Of course, there's that. all the time there's more to be done. But in, in, I'm whole with it. I'm complete with it because I feel that this has been done properly because of the effort that was expended. So that's one example of what it means that the, that the masculine has a sense of Hashem's wholeness. Wholeness by Hashem doesn't mean that it's perfect in the sense that everything is exactly the way it should be. No. Wholeness means that I expended the, the effort that I needed. And I need to be able to show that all the time at home. I need to show it to everybody. It's true, there's much more to strive for. There's infinitely more to strive for. But I'm looking at the pneumius. The pneumius is that you made the effort. And again, this is not make the effort, who cares what the, right? There used to be something like that in mathematics. That they used to teach arithmetic in such a way that it didn't matter what, what result you got. You got 100 anyway if you just tried. Because it was such a thing in the 80s when I was growing up. So that was nonsense. <laughs> Why is it nonsense? Because there are certain Absolutely. things that you didn't try if you didn't get to the right answer. I mean, it's, it's not, you can't that's say, yeah, there's an absolute answer here. If you, didn't fin- if you didn't get to that answer, you didn't do something. You missed doing something. Some forms of, if a person uh, cooks and it comes out burnt, you can't say that they didn't do. <laughs> it's in front of me, they did. It's burnt, it's not exactly the way it should be. But if you don't even have an answer, <laughs> <laughs> Nothing came out of the oven, so you didn't put anything into the oven. That's something entirely different. So I have to look at the at the ikr. The ikr is, is to feel the completion in the act itself. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.